I'm just going to come out and say it. It's refreshing to play a game that does not take itself too seriously. And NIS America's Hyper Dimension Neptunia is exactly that. A game that does not take itself too seriously. It's set in the world of game industry, which consists of four lands. Planet Tomb, Xbox, I mean Leanbox, Wii, I mean Low Wii, and PlayStation, um, that is, Lustation. Each realm is protected by a goddess, but the problem is, the goddesses don't get along, and it's up to you, playing as a fallen Neptune, to restore peace. I want to travel the world and fight bad guys! Aside from the video game references scattered all about, the game plays like a fairly standard JRPG, complete with dungeon crawling, level grinding, and a Japanese-style visual novel storyline presentation. The presentation is really the strongest point of this game. It features some beautifully drawn anime-style characters, though the actual in-game characters look somewhere between a PS2 and PS3 in quality. Don't bring that up to an NPC. The dialogue is entertainingly written, and the voiceover work is so-so, but the voices do well to match their speakers. Girl, this isn't the place for kindergartners to have a recess. Conversations range from anything from actual storyline-related items to references of Tetris and other games from the past and present, as well as the occasional boob joke. The size of my bust equates my aptitude as a goddess. It's these kind of things that can bring a small smile to the player's face and almost makes the worst of dungeons worth putting up with. While presentation may be the strongest point of the game, gameplay is very much the weakest. Everything is based out of a menu-driven overworld for each landmass. This is where you shop, progress the storyline, initiate quests, and so on. It's simple and compact, but it also means there's no overworld exploration. In fact, the only means of actually venturing about is in the dungeons, and they can be hit or miss. Each dungeon has its own requirement to complete, whether it's defeating a certain number of monsters, beating the boss, etc. Sometimes they're done in a matter of minutes, other times you can expect to spend 20 or more minutes with little evidence of end in sight. The dungeons are not without their perks though, they typically have a few chests with goodies inside, as well as some hidden treasure chests that have semi-essential items for your party. Players should though expect the camera to drive them bonkers. Another thing done in dungeons is battling. This too is hit or miss. No pun intended. Battles are turn-based, but each character's action is done by making button combos using the circle, X, and triangle buttons. Certain combinations will set off a mildly spectacular looking attack. The nice thing though is that the players actually set these up in advance, and more can become unlocked throughout the game. Also, some of these combos pay homage to retro gaming titles. Furthermore, combos can be chained to do extra damage against the monster with the same character. Neptune also gets one extra battle-only specific ability, being able to transform from her giggly, girly, normal self into Neptune the Goddess. The transformation looks like it was taken right out of an episode of Sailor Moon, but it gives her a new look and changes her stats. Everything else is pretty much all hunky-dory with battles, except for items. Items are an absolute pain in the butt. They can't be used by the player, neither in nor out of battles. Rather, they're executed via a random number generator when certain requirements are met. What this really boils down to is when you really, really need to heal, you might not be able to. Hopefully this type of item usage is not used in a single video game from here on out. But while Hyper Dimension Neptunia is far from a superior game, mostly due to the so-so gameplay and abysmal item system, its charm and overall entertainment value can salvage it enough to recommend. My final Game Guy's grade, B. This is Game Guy, Barry White.